These notes are on the topic of the average rate of change. This is the topic that is covered in 2.7H. Uh, the average rate of change we always talk about as having two pieces. It happens on a particular interval, so a particular from one x value to a second x value. And we need a function in order to find that average rate of change. The formula for the average rate of change is f of b minus f of a all over b minus a, where b and a are the interval that I'm looking at from a to b. So we're going to look at two examples. In both of these, we're going to find the average rate of change for the function on the specified interval. So in example one, we have a linear equation. So we're looking at f of x equals 2x minus 9. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the formula f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. I then am going to substitute in my b and my a. 3 is my a and 7 is my b. So I have f of 7 minus f of 3 all over 7 minus 3. Now the denominator is straightforward to simplify. Um, 7 minus 3 is 4. The numerator is going to be a little bit more complicated because it requires me to actually find f of 7. You'll remember that finding f of 7 means I'm plugging 7 in for the x. So I'm going to have 2 times 7 minus 9. That's happening right here. 2 times 7 minus 9. I'm going to put big brackets around that so that I can very clearly see that that is my first piece. That's my f of 7. I then have subtract, and then I have f of 3. So I'm going to use the exact same function, but instead of putting 7 in for the x, I'm putting 3 in for the x. So 2 times 3 minus 9. And I then simplify. All the numbers are there, I just have to actually now find the final answer. So 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 9 is 5. Minus 2 times 3 is 6. Minus 9 is negative 3. All over 4. 5 minus negative 3 is 8 over 4, which is 2. And then we'll say that our average rate of change is 2. And you'll notice that for the linear, the average rate of change is exactly the slope. It is what you see and what you think about as the, as the slope. Our second example is going to be an exponential equation. In this case, our exponential equation is 3 times 2 to the x power. And I'm looking at the interval from negative 3 to 2. So my smallest x value is negative 3, my largest is 2. Again, I start by writing the formula for the average rate of change. f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. And then I start to plug things in. You'll remember from the previous example that the first number represents a and the second in the interval represents b. So I have f of 2 minus f of negative 3 all over 2 minus negative 3. I then can simplify the bottom pretty straightforward to do that. 2 minus negative 3 is positive 5. For the top, again, this notation means that I am plugging in 2 into this function. So I've got 3 times 2 to the second power. 
big brackets around that so that I know that's, that's the first function I'm simplifying. Minus my second function, which is 3 times 2 to the negative 3 power. Simplifying the top, do exponents first. 2 to the second is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 2 to the negative 3 power is a fraction or a decimal. In this case, that decimal is 0 0.125. Make a little note of that. And when I multiply that by 3, I get 0 0.375. I then am dividing that by my denominator of 5. I subtract my numerator from my denominator. Sorry, I subtract my 12 uh, minus 0 0.375, which gets me 11.625. And then I'm dividing by 5. Dividing 11.625 divided by 5 gets me 2.325. So unlike the linear, in the exponential, this 2.35 does not appear in the uh, original equation anywhere. So the average rate of change for an exponential is not something I can just read from the equation. I actually have to go through this whole process in order to find the average rate of change there.